Oh my god, it's a string. It's literally a string on a base plate. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know where I'm going with this intro, but if you couldn't guess from the title of this video, this Roblox Advanced Scripting episode is going to cover string functions from the string library that Roblox has provided to us that we can use to read but also modify strings in Roblox Studio. And I'm gonna be showing you 10 of the most commonly used functions from the string library that Roblox has for us to offer. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get straight into implementing in Roblox Studio. Now that we understand it, let's implement string functions inside of Roblox Studio. So I quickly whipped up a script inside of server script service that has two lines, one for a variable that is set equal to a, the string hello world, and then we're simply just going to print that string. Now, we don't need to go over what this does, it's very self-explanatory, but I do want to incorporate uh, some string functions to uh, our already existing strings so that I can show you all the different ways you can manipulate strings um, and incorporate them in your Roblox game. Starting with the first function, which is called len. And this is basically short for length. And this function basically counts the length of a string. And the length of a string is determined by the number of characters uh, that are in a specific string. So in this case, uh, this string, hello world, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, because we're counting the space as a character, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So it should be a length of 12 characters. And that is essentially what this function should return if we use the len function. And this is basically what it's gonna look like. So in our print statement, we're simply just going to start by saying string dot len. We start with the keyword string and then dot len, which is the function name. And then we're gonna wrap our, and then we're going to wrap this in parentheses and put my string as a argument for it. So if we were to go into the game, hit test and then hit run, we should see in the output, it should say the number 12 because instead of printing out the string itself, we are printing the length of the string, which is going to be 12. So this is one of the easiest and also most useful string functions to use in Roblox Studio and in Roblox Studio. And I highly recommend you use this in your future games. The next string function is called find, and this function essentially allows us to locate a specific location within a string uh, to find a specific pattern that we want to look for. So let's say we were looking at this string, hello world, and we wanted to look for just the hello part. Uh, basically what would happen is if we used this find function, it's going to return two numbers. It's going to return the index of where it starts to find this word and then the index of where this word ends. So if you remember how we count indices in a string, we basically start at index one and then we go up, like we're just counting numbers basically. Um, so it's going to start at index one with H and then it's going to end at index five with the O. And that is essentially what string.find allows us to do. So instead of string.len, we're going to replace this with string.find and then it's going to take in two arguments. The first one is going to be the string itself. And then the second argument is going to be the pattern that we're looking for. And if you remember, the pattern is hello, which is what we're trying to look for. So if we go into the game now and then hit run, what should happen in the output is it returns back two numbers. Like I said, it returns back two numbers. The first one being the starting index of where we start to find this pattern. And then the end location of this pattern that we are looking for. And we can be more specific about this too. Like if we just wanted to look for were like in world, then it's going to give us the starting and ending index of just those um, characters inside of this string. So it starts at uh, index seven and then ends at index nine. And so if you really wanted to, you could make two variables like this by saying local start index comma end index equals. And then we can just take string dot find, cut this, paste it into here. And then you basically now have two variables here separately, one for the starting index and one for the ending index. And that is essentially how string.find works. The next function is called g sub, and this is essentially short for global substitution. So what this function does is it takes a string and then we pass in a pattern that we're looking for. So if we were to, let's say, look for the word hello, if we wanted to replace this word with a different word, then we're going to go through the entire string, look for this pattern, and then we're going to replace it and then essentially return back a new string that has 
a new string that made the changes that we were looking for. And I'm gonna show you what this looks like. So we're just simply going to say string dot G sub open and close parentheses. And then the first thing we're going to pass in is the string itself, my string. And then we're going to look for a pattern, which let's say instead of world, what if we wanted to change this to something different like brawl dev or something, then we're going to look for the pattern, which is going to be world. And then we have to pass in this replacement. Now this replacement can be a string, it can be a table, or it could even be another function itself. But I'm gonna show you all three examples. The first one is just going to be a normal string. So I'm just going to replace this with brawl dev. And so what should happen is it's going to return the new string that's modified, but it actually returns two values. So the first one is going to be the new string itself. And then the second one is going to be the number of occurrences that, um, or the number of changes that have happened to the string, because we might find hello world world like this. So it'll just change it twice instead of once. And so that's going to keep track of how many times it's been recorded. It's going to be in the second variable. So it's, we're just gonna call this one uh, num occurrences equals and then string dot g sub so we can pr uh, print the new string and we can also print the number of occurrences like this so if we go into the game hit run then what we should see in the output is first the new string so it's going to say hello brawl dev brawl dev because there's two worlds so we changed it both times and then it returned the number of occurrences that uh, have changed with the string now, if let's say we wanted to look for any word and not just a specific word, uh, like if we wanted to look for hello, world, world, all that sort of stuff, like as long as it's spaced out by a space and these are all individual words that we're trying to look for, then what we can do is use a special pattern that allows us to capture that. So I'm just going to comment this out. I'm going to copy this, paste it down here. Instead of having the pattern just be the string world, what we want to do instead is make this a um, a word identifier. And this is essentially what it's going to look like. We're going to put in a uh, percent symbol W, like W stands for word, and then we're going to add a plus sign indicating that we can have more than one word that we look for. Um, I'm going to explain in more detail what this identifier means, but this is essentially how you capture uh, any word inside of a string. And we're going to replace whatever's inside of here with um, this, with whatever the replacement is on the right. So if we hit run, then everything should say brawl dev, brawl dev, brawl dev, uh, just like that. So that is how that works. Now, if we, let's say, wanted to uh, make a table, instead of having a direct replacement just be a string, we can have a dictionary of tables that tell us that we want to replace hello with something else. Or if we wanted to replace world with something else, then we can use a table. So I'm gonna comment this out and I'm gonna show you down here um, that we can indicate any word that's in here, but we can put a replacement dictionary inside of here uh, like this. So for each key, uh, it's going to be the word that we're looking for. So in this case, we can say one example being hello. We're going to set this equal to uh, the uh, the new string that we want to replace this with. So that's going to be the value. So instead of hello, what if we just wanted to say uh, greetings like this? And then we'll space this out with a comma. And then we can replace world with, uh, let's say, brawl dev instead. So now... Anytime we find a word that matches hello, we're going to replace it with greetings. Anytime we find a word that matches world, we're going to replace it with brawl dev. So now let's hit run and then see our new output. So it should say greetings, brawl dev, brawl dev. And it should have been replaced three times because we used a uh, dictionary to allow us to change specific words uh, in the string. Here's another th cool thing we can do we can put this in a function that basically says uh, whatever word we find in here, then we can put this in a function and return a new value based on the outcome of this function that um, we give it. I'm going to show you what this looks like. So I'm going to drop a line down here, paste this into here, and then right before it, we're going to declare a new function. We're just going to say local function um, operation. It could just be anything really. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and then we're going to pass in a word like this. Um, we're going to hit enter like this. And then what we can do here is basically return a new string by taking in the word. And then we can concatenate this with, let's say something random. We can just say word, uh, I, I don't know, plus one. I'm just like thinking of something random off the top of my head right now. So we're going to have the word 
uh, followed by a space and then in parentheses plus one. So we're just going to return that as the new string every single time we pass in a new word into this function. So for our replacement, instead of using a table, we're going to just simply put in the operation function and the rest should do it for us. So now let's hit run and then see our output like so. Uh, we should see hello plus one. Uh, world plus one and then world plus one again. So that is another cool thing you can do with G sub and I hope this part has um, been very practical to you so far. The next one is split and it's actually pretty easy. If we imagined our string to be like this spaced out by three different words, but we wanted to separate all of these words into an, ar an array or a in into a table that we can use to iterate through all of these different words. What we can do is use the split function that basically splits this string into three different words inside of a table. And then we can use that table to iterate through all the words. So this is basically what it's gonna look like. We're just simply going to say local words because we're gonna return a table equals string dot split open and close parentheses. We're first going to pass in the string and then we're going to pass in a separator. And this can also be a string as well, or just a simple character. So in this case, what we want to separate here is the space. And so this separator is going to tell us that every, anytime we see a space, we're going to separate whatever was before it into a, um, entry, and then we're going to put that into the table words like that. It's kind of strange by default. I'm pretty sure Roblox has commas as the separator, even though in a lot of other languages, they have space as the default. So uh, if you're trying to use space, then you need to specify space if you want to uh, separate the words. So now that we have this, we can basically iterate through uh, every single word that's in the words table like this, and then that's basically that's that's basically all we need to do right here. So if we hit run, then what we should see is that for each entry, it's going to print out all the words that have been separated. So we have hello and then drops down a line to world and then finally world again after it was separated. The next two functions are synonymous with each other, and those are upper and lower. So basically what these two functions do is it takes a string and then it takes and then it changes every single character to be the uppercase or lowercase version of that character. So if we were to basically print out a string dot upper in this case, and then we pass in my string like this, it's going to take every single character and make it uppercase by force. And then we can basically do the same thing down here with a string dot lower like this. And then if we go into the game and then hit run, we should see in the output that with my string, it's going to first print out the entire string in all uppercase. And then for the lower, it's going to print out every single character in the string in lowercase. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. I don't need to explain too much on this one. The next function is format. And this is actually one of the more difficult ones to understand. And this is something I can make a whole video about, but I'm not gonna go too much into detail about it. I'm just gonna show you the basics of using string format and how it works. So let's say we have our string up here with hello world, and we wanted to reuse this string to have a specific format so that if we wanted to use the string for a future use case, or if we just wanted to use a string that's very organized with this format that we like to have it with, then we use the string format function that allows us to do that. One example of using string format is by uh, specifying one word in here that we want to change based on where we, uh, based on when and where we use this in our code. So instead of world, let's say we wanted to replace this with um, brawl dev, or we wanted to replace this in a different place with Roblox. Like we want to constantly, we want to replace whatever this word is with a different word, but using the same format. What we can do is replace this with a specifier and the type of whatever this is inside of here. So this is basically what it would look like. So since we don't know what this is yet, um, we can now specify this with brawl dev. We can even specify this with world and we can even specify this with Roblox, depending on how we use this. And this is basically how it works down here. We can say print string dot format, open close parentheses, pass in the string. And then inside of here, we can pass in whatever we want to replace this with. We can basically say world and we can copy and paste this down here 
and we can replace this with Brawl Dev, and we can also replace this with Roblox. So if we hit run, then we should see all three use cases down in the output. So we should first see World, then Brawl Dev, and then Roblox. So that is one way we can use string format, and there's definitely many other ways we can use this. We can use this to help uh, pad the, our strings to make it look nice by, let's say, having some padded uh, space before or after a string using flags. Uh, we can even use um, width to specify how long we want a specific uh, part in the string to be. Like, let's say we had the number 100 but we wanted it to be longer than 100 for padding reasons. Like if we want to have multiple numbers that had a uh, similar padding with two zeros, regardless of how big or small the number is, then we can just add some trailing zeros to here um, if we wanted to give a certain amount of width to uh, our formatted string like so. There's a lot of use cases for this, but I do want you to, to be aware of the four parts that make up a format. It's the specifier, which is indicated by this um, percentage symbol right here. Then it's going to be the flags, the width, and then the precision. So the specifier essentially is this symbol right here, like I just mentioned. And whatever hap and then whatever character we place after that, that's going to specify the type of whatever we, we want to insert inside of here. So the S stands for string, but if we wanted to, let's say, specify an integer or a number, then we specify it using D, uh, or even I in this case. If we wanted to do a float, we would specify with F, and you kind of get the idea. With this specifier and this uh, data type, we can basically replace it with uh, whatever this second argument is going to be right here. So this float, could be 10.5 and it's going to be put inside of here. And you have to make sure that you get the right specifier type with whatever argument you're trying to put inside of these parameters right here. Flags help us achieve uh, certain kinds of uh, formatting. Like let's say we wanted to add padding to the left side, then what we can do is basically say, uh, let's say we had a print statement down here with string.format like this, and then let's create our own pattern here. If we wanted to, let's say, specify a flag of having uh, a bunch of padded space on the right side of whatever we put inside of here, then what we need to do is put down a negative sign, and then we put down the, the amount of padding we want to put in here. So if we, let's say, wanted 10 characters, after we put in a value inside of here, so this is going to be the padding, and then whatever we specify inside of here, we can let's say this be a number, then we can put on the right side our number, which in this case, we could probably just say 100. I'm just gonna comment these two parts out really quick. Okay, so let me hit run very quickly. And then what we should see in the output is 100, but you might notice that there's all of this white space after it because we added a padding to it. And what's interesting about this as well is we can combine multiple flags together. Like another instance of this would be adding zeros to our padding. So we could get rid of this negative flag and instead put a zero to pad 10 zeros to the left of the number that we have specified here. So if we hit run, then what we should see in the bottom is that there isn't exactly 10 zeros to the left of it, but it has a fixed length of 10 uh, numbers now because uh, 100 makes up three of them and then the seven zeros pad the rest of them to the left side of the number. And then we have things like precision. If let's say we had a decimal that we wanted to be in the hundreds or the thousands place like this, um, or if we want to have a period specifically after the 10 right here, then what we can do is use, per, uh, what we can do is use float point precision, which basically looks like this. If we had a print statement with string.format like this, um, and then we basically had our own formatted string like this with a specifier and then a dot, uh, let's say we want to have a number like this to F, and then we specified the number we have right over here to the left side. So let's say we want it to be 100. Essentially what's happening here is we first have our specifier and then we have a period two, which basically tells us that uh, with whatever float value that we put inside of here, uh, we want to pad it with a dot and then pad it with two zeros after we give this number to this format. So if we hit run, then we should see in the output, it shows 100 point zero zero because we specified a float point precision with the dot and the two with also the F um, afterwards as well. So that's another cool and useful thing you can do with string format. Once again, this is just a very brief overview of string format, but I hope this gave you more insight into using string format for the future.
The next function is match. Now this is very similar to find that we had at the very beginning of this episode. So this one right here, because find returned two numbers that basically gave us the starting index and the ending index of where they found this matching pattern. But this time, this is just simply going to return the, the value itself if it does find it in the string. So this is all we're going to say. We're just going to make a print statement right here. And then we're just going to simply say string dot match open and close parentheses. We're first going to put in my string and then whatever is going to be on the right side is going to be uh, a string pattern. So if let's say we wanted to find world in hello world, then what it's simply just going to do is return that word that pattern that it found in the string. So if we hit run, then what we should see in the output is just simply world because it found world. Now, if let's say we put something that it wouldn't be able to find, like let's say the number uh, 103 as a string, then it should just print out nil because it was not able to find it. So match basically says it either finds the word that it's looking for or it just returns nil. And it's it just as simple as that. Next up we have reverse, which basically just takes the string and then it and then it flips the ordering of the uh, characters in reverse. So if we were to print this out, say string dot reverse, and then we pass in just one argument, which is just going to be the string, then all that's going to happen in the output is it's going to print out the same string, but in the opposite direction. So it's going to basically just say, so it's basically just going to print hello world in reverse. It's pretty self-explanatory. It shouldn't be that hard to understand. I think you get it. Next function is rep, and this is short for repeat. So basically this takes the string and then it repeats that string over and over again uh, for however many times we specify it with this function. So this is basically what it's gonna look like. If we say print, open and close parentheses, string dot rep, open and close parentheses, and then we and then we first pass in my string, and then at and then for the second argument, we put down a number here so we can say three in this case it's going to print hello world or no the string is going to say hello world hello world and then hello world three times so if we run the game in the output the one string should just say hello world hello world and then hello world so it just simply repeats the string that we pass in with however many times we specify on the right side the last function I'm going to introduce is G match which is short for global match and it's as the name suggests, it's pretty similar to match in how if we found a specific string or even a specific pattern within a bigger string, then we would just simply return that string itself. But with gmatch, what this does is it returns an iterator for us to constantly loop through a, a big string to uh, return uh, the results of what we're trying to look for within that string. It's especially useful if we provide a formatted string as the pattern. And so here's what we can do. We can essentially write a for loop that can loop through all of the words inside of this string, and then we can print it out into the output. Just as a very basic example. So here's what we're gonna say. We're gonna say for word in string dot g match, and then in parentheses, we're going to pass in our string and then our pattern, which this is going to be a specifier for any word that we find inside of here. So we're going to use the percentage sign W, and then we're also going to add a plus flag to it so that um, we know that we're, we can retrieve any word that's past this. So um, once we do that, we can say do, and then we can simply just say print word. And this is a very basic example of using Gmatch. So if we hit run, then what we should see in the output is simply just hello world without taking into account the um, ex exclamation point at the very end of it, because we're trying to catch words rather than symbols. And with that being said, that should be the 10 most used string functions that the string functions library has to offer. I hope you found this video to be informative. So with that being said, I hope you understand more about using string functions inside of Roblox Studio. I'll leave a link to the documentation in the description of this video if you want to take a closer look at it. I might make a future video on string format as its own separate video because it is pretty confusing to learn about at first. I encourage you to use these string functions in your Roblox scripts in in case you do want to mess around with strings, because that is something you are pretty much going to have to do for a lot of the time you are going to be developing on Roblox. 
So I hope this video serves you well. If you want to learn more libraries that Roblox has to offer that I've covered on this channel, I encourage you to watch my coroutines video that I will have a link for you right here to watch. But with that being said, I hope you found this video to be helpful and I will see you in the next episode. Take care.